Hi there, this is an instructional video on how to install the 2020 main jet in the 200 carbs. We get a lot of people ask us about this, so we thought we'd give you a little informational video. Um, what you get with the kit is a set of instructions. You get four jets, uh, two above the stock size and two below, and you also get uh, two shim washers for the needle. The reason this kit was developed is when the 200 snowmobile engine was designed and dynoed, after it was done, it had to go through emissions testing. Uh, on emissions testing, what they did is they leaned down the main jet dramatically and they also leaned down the mid-range with the needle. So this kit corrects that. Um, we talked about the four jets and stuff. I'm going to slide this to the side here quick. And I will proceed. So what we have here is a 2020 all the way to current year Articat, Skidoo, and Yamaha 200. It's the same thing for all of them. It's a constant velocity style carb. So what we'll do is we'll start with the main jet first. So, and I have a, a couple of the screws loose here already just to save time um, for pulling things apart. So we'll quickly take this and always make sure that you have a good tip screwdriver uh, when you're using this Phillips screwdriver. Make sure the tip of it is good because these screws are very tight. So you'll pull the bowl off and the first thing you'll notice is that you've got a little brass stem here. What that is is an overflow tube. Be careful not to bend that. Also, you've got an O-ring that fits in a groove. Make sure that that stayed in the groove when you take it off so you don't pinch it when you put it back on. Inside what we have is we have a pilot jet, we have a choke passage jet, and then we also have a main jet. The jet you're going to be changing is the main jet. It just takes a, a flat blade screwdriver, which is, like I said before, make sure the screwdriver is nice and good on the end and it's not a problem. What you do is you'll pull your jet out and you'll replace it with a new jet supplied in the kit. Um, for anybody 2,000 feet or below, um, I would highly recommend using a 110 main jet. This carb comes from the factory with a 107.5 in it. So what you'll do is you'll look on the end of the jet and it'll show the number, but a 110 main jet is the most common jet that you'd use. In fact, probably 90% of the ISOC national racers in 200 class run a 110 main jet the whole season. So I'm going to put the old one back in so we don't use up a kit, but what you'll do is you'll just put your 110 main jet in, line things back up here and um, screw it tight. Now you don't have to over tighten this, just snug it. It's just a brass jet, so it doesn't have to be over tightened. When you put the bottom back on there again, verify that the O-ring is good. And then you'll go ahead and set it on. It'll line up. We'll just put one screw in here right now to... Uh, there, that way it's tightened on there. You're going to make sure you tighten all four screws. Now we'll go to the top. This is the CV style. CV stands for constant velocity. I've got one screw taken out already just to ease the process and make it quicker. These screws are really tight when you take them off. Um, make sure you have a good screwdriver and worst case scenario, if you round it off, you might take a little vice grips and clamp it on the side to take it off. Now, it's not like a, a complicated thing here. It's just a tin cover that comes off and it's got a, a dimple in the center for the spring to ride on. Make sure when you pull this spring out, you don't stretch it or crush it. It's calibrated for this diaphragm. Now what we have is a diaphragm slide. Um, as you see, it comes out of the grooves here. And you see the groove where it goes around in the carb. This is one of the things to look for uh, on this diaphragm. You'll get some of these carbs even from the factory if it all of a sudden falls on its face when you hit the throttle. There's a good possibility that this groove is not lined up with the diaphragm proper. Um, I'm going to pause here a second and we're going to have a picture of what a bad diaphragm looks like. Now that you've seen what the bad diaphragm looks like, uh, we'll move forward. So what we have, this diaphragm is rubber and it relies on vacuum and it pulls up and down. Here's the needle. This is the part that we're going to adjust. Inside here, there is a plastic nut. Uh, it's hard to see on the video here, but what we use, we cheat. Uh, we use a six millimeter deep socket. I think I've got some uh, Kleenex or paper towel shoved in the bottom so it's not so deep. You go inside, 
you do a quarter twist, you tip it over, and out comes your needle. Now make sure when you pull this nut off, inside here there is a spring, and I'll try a close up, it's a really tiny spring. Make sure that that doesn't roll off the bench because you're going to have to use it over. So now what we'll do is we'll take the two shim washers that come with the kit. We'll put them on this side and we'll slide the needle back in the center hole. Now this is where the fun part is, is what we usually will do, and we'll try to get it the first time here. We put it in the socket, make sure the spring's on, and we mine it up inside. We give it a half twist and now we're good. Now that worked pretty easy. Uh, don't be surprised if you got to try it a couple times. It's kind of a bear to do the first time you do it. Now this is the part that um, everybody has problems with them when they put them back together. They'll take the slide and they'll try to slide it inside here like this and line up the dimple with the dimple but they can't get this to stay in. Here's a little trick to do that and this is what we do here. Take your diaphragm, turn it into an umbrella. Put your finger inside the carb, the opposite of the butterfly. You'll set your diaphragm in there, get your needle lined up. Let's see, we get that put in the right spot here. And you'll just set it on top. You're keeping this slide up with your finger. Now you set the spring in the top. And one thing I might add here, and maybe before I move forward on this, I'm going to take this back out. There's one thing that we've seen also, is that this cover, right on the edge of the tip of my finger there, I'll use a screwdriver so you can see better. This little lip on some of them is ground too tall. And when you set the cover on the carburetor, and this is how we check it, it needs to set nice and flat and not rock. Like this in here is not moving. Um, if it did, it would, it would teeter back and forth. So this one happens to be good. So we'll go back here and uh, redo this again quick. Slide it in. Make our umbrella. We'll put the spring in. Now we'll take our cover and set on it. And what you do is you hold everything tight with your finger until the cover is on firmly. Then all you have to do is let loose of the slide your diaphragm's in its groove like it's supposed to be. And then you'll go ahead and um, tighten the cover back up. And then the last thing we do is we'll go inside with our finger and we'll pull up the slide and let it pop down. And that tells us that we haven't bound up the spring or the diaphragm. So there you go. You've just put a 2020 main jet in a 200 carb. Uh, feel free to give us a call if you have any questions. Call our tech line. We always return our calls and we always return our emails. We get so many, sometimes uh, we have to get back with you, but we'll always try to get back to you within the day to help you out. Thank you for watching the video and I hope this helped.